Okay, hi there, Jeff back again with another in our series of key diagrams in economics. At the moment, we're focusing on microeconomics. Uh, we're walking through uh, some key diagrams to help you score top marks for analysis. And it also helps if you can apply the data as well. So we'll look at that in this video. Let's spend a few minutes together, if it's okay with you, by thinking about price volatility at a micro level. Now, in many commodity markets, prices can be highly unpredictable from one time period to another. And that volatility, that movement up and down in price, can have serious micro and macroeconomic consequences. I mean, think about, for example, your study of development economics. Many low and low middle income countries are highly primary product dependent. And volatile world prices and incomes and export sales uh, can make their economic cycles highly unpredictable as well. There are many causes of price volatility in markets. Just a quick recap on some of them. And we're going to work through the diagram to help explain this. Uh, typically, volatility is uh, amplified when there's a low price elasticity of demand for the product and, and this is critical, a low price elasticity of supply. In other words, supply uh, is difficult to change to respond to increases or decreases in demand in the short term. Volatility is also caused by unpredictable supply shocks affecting, for example, mining and farming and other, and other primary industries. Demand shocks also have a, a, a role to play, particularly when global demand rises and falls unpredictably. There can be speculative demand, people uh, are taking bets on future price movements. Trade conflicts, trade wars can lead to export ban, which limits supply. And uh, volatility can persist if interventions such as uh, buffer stock schemes uh, prove to be relatively ineffective. Good example of price volatility, I just wanted to choose a couple for you in this video, is the price of nickel. Uh, you can see here in March 2022, a huge surge in the price of a ton of metric, uh, met metric ton of nickel, something like 34,000 US dollars. In comparison or in contrast, go back to December 2016, uh, when the price was uh, was below ten thousand dollars, so there's been a huge volatility in the world's price of nickel. So um, an upward trend, I suppose, in the last three or four years, but but lots of fluctuations. And uh, what's happened is the price has gone up because of disruptions to supply chains and the, a general uh, global scarcity of raw materials and metals as the world economy has recovered from the pandemic. Nickel is a good example of something with a derived demand. It's uh, it's crucial for many industries, uh, for example, the production of stainless steel. And therefore, as construction starts to pick up again, so too does the demand for nickel. OK, so what about the, the diagram for price volatility? Let's work through it. So let's take nickel as our example. Low price elasticity of demand because of its role as an essential input. Low price elasticity of supply in the short term is often hard to eke out extra supply if demand goes up. So therefore, at the equilibrium quantity Q1 and price P1, uh, there is a balance between supply and demand. Well, any shift in one or both of those curves will cause the price to move up and down the y-axis. Let's consider, first of all, an increase in supply, S1 to S2. That drives the price down uh, to P2, big fall in price, increased quantity traded. So an increase in supply can cause a fall in price. Equally, on the other side of the market, it could be that demand has gone up. We talked about nickel being used in construction and lots of other uh, applications. So there could be an outward shift of demand, D1 to D2, which then causes the price to jump back up. At an output Q3, the price rises to P3. So you can see here that shifts in supply and demand particularly when the two curves are price inelastic, leads to a lot of price volatility. Another good example, just a quick one, goes back to 2021, a year ago, when there was a surge in the annual price for iridium. Uh, it went up from about, well, well you can see what happened, <laughs> so like one and a half thousand dollars per troy ounce. Suddenly the price dramatically increased in, in sort of March, early, early months of 2021. Again, largely the result of supply shortages uh, because there was increased interest in and demand for um, iridium to produce green hydrogen. Iridium is a transition metal. 
It's one of the most corrosion resistant metals. It's also one of the rarest, actually, in the Earth's crust. But you get less price volatility if the demand or the supply curve becomes more elastic. In particular, if the supply curve becomes price elastic. Let's just go back to the previous diagram just to finish off with. Take a look at this diagram with price P3. Uh, demand is shifted out to D2. And uh, given the level of supply, the price rises from P2 to P3. However, if supply was more price elastic, if it was more responsive to demand, let's draw that one in actually. There you go, that's supply three. That's a more elastic supply curve, cutting the original equilibrium point at P2. In this case, you don't get the increase in price necessarily. You only get a, a fairly modest increase in the price. Obviously, the quantity goes up from Q2 to Q4 because the supply is able to respond. But the equilibrium price, as you can see here, what, what, originally it was P2 to P3. Now it only goes up from P2 to P4. So can you see that if you have a more price elastic supply, prices tend, other things being the same, to be more stable in markets. There we go. That's my video on price volatility. Hope that was useful for you. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive, stay curious, and hopefully see you sometime soon.